Okay, thank you. Uh, Jerry Decker's been a, an inspiration, uh, a catalyst for a lot of this stuff. There's been times in the past when uh, Stephen Ellswick over here was working with the Tesla Society and he's still doing some good work with the exotic research. Uh, different people have put together presentations like this one. I'm proud to be here, pleased to be here. Yeah, I see a lot of uh, faces that I've seen before at other places and a few new people. It's good to be back. I'm a dreamer, just like, all, like Peter Lindemann and Doug and a lot of other people that you've seen. We're the people that see it before. We're trying to show you our vision, vision transference, and we go from there. Is while the tape is starting to run, is uh, a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen and water vapor coming out of specific kinds of electrolyzers. When you create, when you split the water at, this partic at, at exactly the time and then use it within a few minutes, well, you just split it together. Okay? You can actually use it a year later, but the sooner you use it, the more power you get out of it. You can, you can get effects by doing this that you cannot get by just using hydrogen and oxygen in bottled form. And by doing this, I'm re anytime you want to play the video, just go for it. So what we're doing is there's, Brown's gas is a mixture of about six different gases. This is William Rhodes, who was the uh, original inventor of the, what they call the dual ducted gas. He's 86 years old today, still bright, an uh, incredible mind. This is some of the um, patents that uh, he has patented in his life. It's interesting that uh, he invented and had the, you'll see the pictures of his device and stuff. It's interesting that his research was virtually identical to mine, or mine was identical to his, being as I did it as, um, but he did this 35 years ago. Anytime the government needs help, he's one of the people they call. This is Joe Brown here at the, uh, uh, his shop in laboratory. Now what he was trying to do is make vehicles run on water and what you're seeing is a dyno set up here with, a, with an engine and a propane type carburetor converted to hydrogen and then back behind here <coughs> you see the electrolyzer which was 10,000 liter an hour electrolyzer based on the old technology not the new stuff that we've got and when this 10,000 liter an hour electrolyzer turned on it dimmed the lights in the neighborhood but it, but it did run this engine. It produced enough gas to run this engine. Now the technologies that you're hearing today actually would be able to produce uh, the same volumes of gas but using relatively small amounts of electricity so an ordinary alternator can, can actually produce enough gas by splitting water to run an engine. But that's future stuff. I'm, I'm not like uh, some that will tell you it exists now. I'm saying the potential exists now. We can run engines on this gas. We just have to find a way of producing a large volume of gas with a small amount of electricity. And that has happened many times in the past, twice in my own shop, and I have documentation on quite a bit of other people who have done it around the world. So Brown's gas is actually a mixture of about six different gases, all created from water, all created on demand as it's going. It's got the monatomic oxygen and hydrogen, it's got the uh, diatomic oxygen and hydrogen, it's got water vapor, and it's got a mixture, uh, uh, something that I call expanded water, where the, where the water didn't actually split, but it gained so much energy that it turned into a gas without actually being steam. Okay, so you have a water vapor which is electrically enhanced instead of steam and with these six different gases coming out, you get effects that you just can't get with any other gas in the world. This is David Ennis, again, at Southwest Concrete in, in uh, California. And what he's doing is heating up a piece of iron, just a piece of iron rebar, of which he'll add a little bit of aluminum to, uh, that actually makes thermite. And this, uh, this explosion, little, the little pop that you're going to see here, actually uh, is, the, is one of the three procedures that neutralizes radioactive waste. Okay, now he's, he's letting it cool now a little bit. Uh, he was just talking while he did that. There, was, there wasn't any other reason for it. He just wanted to have this pop happen when he, when he was ready to. So now he's just feeding in a little bit of aluminum rod, no flux, and pop, just like that. And radioactive uh, waste goes uh, like a 96% reduction in radioactivity that fast. It also uses, like we're saying, at relatively low cost. So... Um, the uh, trillions of dollars worth of uh, cleanup that are of uh, radioactive waste that are around in nuclear power plants and spent uh, uh, or outdated uh, nuclear weapons are, uh, can totally be neutralized at the source, right where, right where it sits. It doesn't have to be transported anywhere. Virtually all these places have, they can have iron and aluminum trucked into them and they have electricity already. They can, uh, they can just make the browns gas right there and neutralize it. What's happening is uh, 
uh, that just went on and showed the actual test results, and uh, it was a 96% reduction in radioactivity of Americanum. Uh, virtually every radioactive material that's been applied to this gas, and I've got documentation on tests that were done in China and in the United States, even by the Department of Energy. This particular one was done uh, unofficially by the uh, Atomic Energy Canada via Mark Peringa, who is the uh, head of the uh, um, Chalk River Nuclear Reactor, which is Atomic Energy Canada's reactor. And uh, they have since made a public uh, um, documentation of this stuff that you, you've seen, and I've got that sort of literature for anyone who wants to. Uh, uh, I, I'm selling it for a video and a, and, the, and, a, and a relatively thick packet of information on neutralization of radioactive waste for $50. Just a copy of most of the stuff that I've got. In any case, um, Brown's gas has incredible applications, even more than, uh, than you've seen here. Uh, we're, we're currently starting a business which will go after just one of those applications, which is simply uh, non-threatening um, cutting of steel. Like if uh, you go into the politics of neutralization of radioactive waste or uh, uh, running vehicles on water or uh, enhancing the medical uh, community uh, uh, techniques, uh, you're going to run up against political uh, um, blockades that, that I don't want to bother with at this particular time.